Hello, Texture Junkies. Formerly Happy Paper People Sharon here. Um, I'm still a part of the Facebook group. Uh, that's still a wonderful community, and my partner and best friend and I just decided we would be able to do more things separately and on our own channels. So please hit the notification bell, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, um, and uh, share with your friends. That would be fantastic. Plus, I'm having a 200 uh, subscriber giveaway, um, and it'll be something special, of course. I love sending out gifts um, and happy mail. So tell your friends. Invite your co crafty co-workers. Um, anybody that you think would enjoy some mixed media, uh, we could be doing anything. And I mean anything. Mixed media assemblage is my passion passion. And I love using all different kinds of items uh, to make things for around the home. And remember the Kitchen Witch? This is an art room fairy. And I want to tell you a few tips about how I made her. Because I know that you've got a pile of stuff you're hoarding because it inspires you. And that's the kind of things I used here. Plus, I used for her wings... I've got a tray here. Hold on. I'm going to set her off to the side. For her wings, I actually used some fabric that I have. It's like a waxed canvas sort of, I don't know. Um, it's upholstery fabric. Um, but you could use anything. Uh, just find something that's a little stiffer and make it even more stiff with gesso or um, even a coat of um, uh, decoupage glue or school glue with a little water in it and that'll stiffen your fabric up even more. Um, and then I just stenciled and painted it uh, just with a sponge. Um, and here's another one that I made that I just like used a card on to scrape the color and then I um, stenciled it. So, and I made patches. We did patches in the group this last Saturday and that's the challenge right now to make some fabric patches like the kind your mom used to put on your knee when you got a hole in your jeans. <laughs> but you can use them anywhere. Um, think outside the box. And speaking of boxes, I always have a stack of this stuff laying around. I have like a bin next to me and they stand up in it. So that is how I did her head and it's really thick and it's not going anywhere at all. Um, I just cut out the photo that I wanted and it's from a book, um, glued it down really good. And then after I put her together, I used some wax on it. So wax will, you know, seal it up nice. It'll uh, protect it. Um, I, I don't think you'll be getting water on your walls, but you know, like from moisture because it is paper. And I did really, really strengthen it up. I mean, it's got a couple layers of that. It's a great way to use a cereal box, really. Um, then I had some stuff here that I was hoarding. These things right here that I made, um, I just love them and I haven't used them yet. And I thought, well, why, why not use them in a place where I can look at them all the time and it makes me smile. So I cut a heart out. This is some vintage fabric that's so thin that I stamped on. Uh, this is called Roman Lace, and I just pinched it on there. But you don't have to have all these items. That's the thing. Um, it's on an antique uh, uh, heater grate. And I'm going to make some friends for her, too. And that'll be the, co the cohesive part of it will be the heater grate and probably a heart. This is just a box that I decoupaged, like... Um, paper mache almost. And then I cut just a square. I wasn't worried about it being perfect or anything like that. I just kind of laid a strip of paper on there, drew a line, took my cutter to it, did a gel print in the back. I made her some hat pins and I used a button that I love that's super old. And it's just stuff I like to look at a lot. Um, she's actually going to hang on my gallery wall around my fireplace and that's why she needs some friends because I like doing things in threes. Um, this is a piece of wood, a wood earring blank, um, just on a wire and it's photo paper that I 
uh, used alcohol inks on and then I embossed it and hit it up with some gilding wax. And then I used that same gilding wax all over to make her all, you know, cohesive. I kind of wanted a monochromatic, which is all of one color, uh, with the black and white and the metallics. So I'll probably do the same thing with her sisters and do a different color that I choose. I'm just going to, you know, look through that art book and see what I can find. Um, so in thinking outside the box, let's talk about this real quick here. And the things we hoard, we all have them. If you're a creator, an artist, a crafter, you have those things. You're like, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I really love it. This is your opportunity. It's got a little glass heart. It's not a bead. This is your opportunity to use those things. So making a mixed media assemblage is such a wonderful way to use those beautiful little items. And they're usually small when we're like, oh, that's so cool and tiny. And, you know, um, this I just made for the next one, hopefully, because, you know, the hearts will be what pulls them together. Here's another one just on uh, some packaging. Um, and then if you have this die, this... I ended up liking the back side of these a whole lot more than the front. It's funny. I used foil tape on paper and then ran it through. Um, you might have some jewelry to hang from the bottom, like some pieces of jewelry that's broken that you were going to use in junk journaling. Um, there's another heart. And then this box was like a, I don't know, it slid into something and there was something inside. It's just a piece of packaging that I covered with German book page. And it's not done. I'll do more things to it, but in the end, it'll get a layer of wax. Um, so I encourage you to just think outside the box. Um, I'm going to share pictures of this over on our Facebook group. I'm going to try to give you a little close up here. I hope you can see. She's just, she turned out even better than I expected. And I love her so much. So go dig through your stuff. Find your favorite things, that bucket of stuff you've been saving and don't know what to do with, and make yourself an art room fairy or a kitchen witch. You could do it the same. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I always use recycled items. That's a tip from me. Um, oh, one more thing I want to share. I'm going to put this up on her. Poor girl. Um... Texture Junkies, that's where you're at right now. That's the new channel. Uh, Facebook, you can go to the Happy Paper People group and join. Just answer the questions, you, you'll get right in. Otherwise, you'll wait for us to accept. Um, my Etsy is Texture Muse. And uh, please like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell. This is the last tip. This is important. Um, I use styrofoam a lot, like styrofoam packaging. So here's the tip. I actually to gesso this fabric, pinned it down with pins. I should have got my sewing one out. I've had a sewing thing for years made out of styrofoam that I covered with um, antique fabric. And I even folded it to make some pockets and put a little thing at the top with some elastic to hold, um, I might have it right here, to hold the thread. Um, hold on, I'm grabbing it. I have a couple of them. I have a couple different sizes. So there it is. But it's a great thing to sit on your lap while you're watching TV and do some maybe some embroidery, some slow stitch, uh, work on a, any project. You can do paper too. Um, you can have different sizes. But this was perfect to pin down so I could gesso this fabric and not get it everywhere. And then you can stand it up to dry. So that is my big tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy this project and that you get to make one too. And if you do, please take a picture and post it in our Facebook group and join our family. It's a great community with lovely women that just encourage each other. And that's what it's all about, encouraging each other. Um, so you have a great day and uh, we'll see you on the flip side, texture junkies.